The Constitution of the United States of America was written in 1787, and by 1791, the first 10 amendments, known as the Bill of Rights, had been added. Taking a historical look at the birth of this nation sheds some light on the possible reasoning behind the infamous and highly debated Seventh Amendment of 1791. Yes, you heard me. This amendment was ratified in 1791, post the American Revolution. What transpired during the four years that prompted the Bill of Rights Second Amendment? It seems these amendments were motivated by lessons learned from the fight for independence from England, but fought by the colonies. By the end of my speech, I hope you are persuaded that the purpose and parameters of the Second Amendment are outdated and need to be revised to be relevant for today. The Second Amendment, known as the Bill of Rights, rights reads, as well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It provided U.S. citizens the right to bear arms in a time when guns were necessary for self-defense and the defense of their family and property. There was peril of attack of foreign enemies, renegades, and Indian attacks many of which were brought on by the invasion of Indian territories. These circumstances, the absence of an organized militia and the threat of foreign invasion necessitated gun ownership. Having just used guns and other arms to ward off the English, the amendment was originally created to give citizens the opportunity to fight back against a tyrannical federal government. The year, this year, marks 228 years since the Second Amendment and nine other amendments were signed into law. Mention the Second Amendment or gun control and you will find emotions run high on both sides of the issue. On the one end of the spectrum, there is an argument that any type of gun control violates this amendment. And on the other, there are those who feel that all guns should be banned. My position is that it's time to revise the Second Amendment before we become a nation where not only are our children killed in their schools, but our safety will be in the hands of the person with the quickest draw. The Second Amendment or gun control is a very polarizing topic in America. And the very mention of it causes emotions to run very high for both proponents and antagonists. Emotions tend to render people incapable of addressing issues constructively and with common sense. Feelings of attachment and unrelenting uh, give and take on the idea of gun ownership seem to be extreme, overboard, and unnatural. What is behind the stubborn, unrealistic desire for uncontrolled gun ownership in America. I quote Tom Hartman from his book, The Hidden History of Gun and the Second Amendment. American culture grew out of genocide, slavery, and white supremacy, and guns have been central to this history. Although the white winners have largely excised from modern history, historical narratives, but the founders knew what was up. When the Bill of Rights was ratified, the Second Amendment institutionalized guns, as well as the militia, into the fabric of this newly formed nation. But this is, in part, an accident of the Constitution history. What, who knew that behind the outcry for the right to bear arms lay such sinister and mal even ideology and intent. Historic, historical patterns and clear and present danger from mass shootings, gun-related suicides, gun accidents, school shootings, and road rage have become commonplace in American citizenship are imposed by this right, the right to bear arms. 
Our entire nation is, adverse, is adversely impacted by the existence and interpretation of this law, and it is a shame that we cannot seem to do anything about it. According to the Webster site on the Council of Foreign Relations article, U.S. Gun Policy Global Comparison, the United States, with less than 5% of the world's population, has about 46% of the world's civilian-owned guns, with 30 or more deaths from guns daily. Gun control advocates regularly cite Japan's high restricted firearm regulations in tandem with its ordinarily low gun homicide rate, which is among the lowest in the world at just three deaths in 2015, the latest year for which data is available. Most guns are illegal in the country and ownership rates, which are quite small, reflect this. The state of Texas, our state, is open carry law, and the news have shown people in camouflage, in places of business, and out on the street. This creates alarming fear, and I feel that my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren deserve a kinder and less hostile America. It is time for us to rethink the Second Amendment and free ourselves from this ideology. I appeal to you to do the following. Write your congressman and put pressure on him or her for gun control. Support and pray for groups such as Every Town for Gun Safety and the multiple student activist groups. Vote for local and national politicians who support sensible gun control. And I end with this quote by Harvey Weinstein. If we don't get gun control laws in this country, we are full of beans. To have a National Rifle Association rule the United States is pathetic. And I agree with Mayor Michael Bloomberg. It is time to put up or shut up about gun control for both parties. Thank you.